Okay, so this is the new TechStrip platform. Uh, before we go into any of the features on here, I'm gonna quickly go over the pricing with you. So the pricing is $10 a month, and that is for the web platform and your phone number. And then there is a price for outgoing text messages. So it costs 0.012 cents per outgoing text segment. A text segment is 160 characters or less. So if you send a text that's 160 or less, it's 0.012 cents. If you exceed that, that's okay. Uh, we're just gonna charge you accordingly for how many segments you use. So for example, if it was 200 characters, that's now two text segments. So it'd be 0.024 cents. And the way we do the, the charging for texting is through credits. So if you notice in the top right-hand corner, it's got that green blinking light and it says a thousand. That's your credits. How it works is when you dip below 500, we auto bill you $40 and that gives you 3,333 credits. So one credit is a text segment. So if you're keeping your messages under 160, you get 3,333 messages. All right. And then actually right next to the, where it shows your credits, it's got the letter S. Can we go ahead and that? And then go ahead and click on my profile. So in here, you're gonna see your credits. You're also gonna be able to change some of your personal info, like your email if you want to. Um, but all the way at the bottom, it's got a theme that you can change from dark to light. I'm not a fan of this dark. If it's kind of tough for you to see, you can change it to the light. It'll brighten everything up for you. Um, so now let's go ahead and on the left, we're going to start with clicking on the import button. Um, are you familiar with CSV files? Fantastic. Do you have one? We're not gonna upload it fully like through the system where it'll charge you. Do you have one we could put in here just so I can uh, see what it looks like? Uh, you gotta click that choose file. Hit upload. It's not gonna actually upload it though. I wanted to show you this page. The only thing we require is the first name and the phone number. But if you choose to, you can bring over all this other information if you have it in your CSV. So you got, you know, email, zip code, all that good stuff that you get for quoting. And then all the way at the bottom is where you would select your drip campaign to go out with it. Um, and we'll kind of go over how to build that together and, you know, teach you how to do that as well. Um, so let's go ahead, let's click on drip campaigns on the left. And go ahead and click on add campaign up in the top right. And we're gonna name this one Andy's Drip. And then go ahead and click add more. And then you see in the middle there where it says merge fields. Yep, we wanna go ahead and copy the one that says first. Um, so while we're building these messages, anytime I say first, you can just paste that in. Now this first message here, we're going to put, hey, first. Are you looking for medical, dental, and vision, or just medical? And we're going to set the duration, keep the duration of that one at one minute. And then we're gonna go ahead and hit add more. And this one we're gonna put first. Did you need an individual or family plan? And that one we're gonna set for one hour. Perfect. And then go ahead. You can hit add more two more times. We're going to put two more on there. 
And this next message, we're going to put, hey, first, would you prefer I call or text you a quote? And we're going to set this one at one day. And then this last message here, we're going to put, are you a smoker? And we're going to set this one for two days. And before we save this, I just kind of want to go over why we built it this way. So I give this example to everybody. Um, there's no, obviously there's no magic pill. I don't know how long you've been with the company. Um, but there's no magic pill that's going to make, you know, make you the top producer just based off your tech. Um, but the, the reason we built it this way is geared more towards getting around spam and getting your message past the carriers. Um, so if you've been around a while, you're going to know that, you know, when you send up a message, the carriers look at it and they decide whether or not they think it's spam. If they think it's spam, they're going to block it and it's not going to get to the, uh, the customer. So all the data we have from you guys from working with you shows that the messages of about 100 characters are going to have the best deliverability and the best response rate. So what I mean by that, as far as deliverability, the shorter messages are less likely to get blocked by, you know, their providers for spam. But what a lot of agents like to do is they like to send out paragraphs. They're basically email, you know, and they'll put, you know, Hi, my name's Andy. I'm a health advisor with the state of Florida. Um, I play golf on the weekends. Information in here, and it just it looks spammy. You know, if you were to look at it, it absolutely looks spammy. If you keep them short, it's a lot less likely to get blocked. On the other side of that, with the um, the response rate, <clears throat> is you know everybody's super busy nowadays. You know, we're all working a lot. We've got kids, we've got social lives, all this other stuff. And if someone's busy and you send them a super long text, they're probably going to look at it, say, I don't have time for this right now, put it in their pocket and forget about it. If you keep them short and sweet, like all these, where they can read it easily and respond to it easily, people are going to be more likely to respond to it. Okay. The other things we want to avoid are what I call super spammy keywords. So first and foremost, we want to take health advisor out of our texting vocabulary. It is super obvious. You guys are the only ones using it. Um, so they know once it comes across, you know, the carriers, they know to block that. Two other big words we're seeing is PPO and open enrollment. Those get blocked very frequently. And the last one that's kind of more recent that we're seeing is agents putting at the end of their message, reply yes for quote. It, it looks spammy. So we, we want to avoid that as well. It's going to get you blocked. So what I recommend um, to you guys when you're building your own messages is kind of step back for a minute and stop thinking like a, an insurance agent. Take a minute, look at your messages and look at it through the eyes of like the phone carriers and say, if I was looking at messages, you know, and checking if they were spam, do what I think this was spammy. And if you do that, that's going to help you guys a lot with your deliverability. Um, so go ahead and click save. And then let's go ahead and let's click on contacts on the left. And go to add contact on the right. And for the first name, just go ahead and put in Andy. And last name, just put V. And then just scroll down towards the bottom. You're going to see one that says campaigns right there. Go ahead and select Andy's drip. And then scroll all the way down and hit save. So that's going to add me as a contact, and it's going to apply Andy's drip that we built onto me. Um, so now, just in this contact area, there's a few things that you're able to do. Um, if you go ahead and click send message right under my name there, you can send me a message. 
but it's also going to show you that that drip was applied. So anytime you see a message with the burgundy around it and the check mark underneath is gray, that means mm -hmm. it's waiting to go out. So it hasn't went out, but it also hasn't failed. It's just waiting. Um, mm -hmm. You'll see once I get that message, it'll change colors and that check mark will go green. Right next to the send message button, there's a notes area. So if you're on the phone with somebody and they, you know, maybe say, hey, call me at seven after my son Jimmy's baseball game. You can make a note of that. So when you get on with them later, you can ask how Jimmy's baseball game went. Right above that, you see it's got my phone number. I click on that, it's going to dial out. So whatever dialer you have on your computer is what it's going to utilize. So you'd have to pick an app. We don't have to do all that right now. Like VS Connect, Google Phone, whatever you're using. Um, at the top of there, there's a block button. So if the customer's harassing you, you can block them. And then the three dots next to it is going to allow you to edit it, delete it, or add a tag. So tags, they're like the disposition, same idea that, that Ringy had. Um, and then directly above that, you've got advanced search. If you click on that, you're able to search by different categories. So you've got tags, your drip campaign, the date, kind of whatever you want to do. Um, so now let's go ahead and we're, I'm going to respond. I got your message here. So if you want to go ahead and click on your audit message really quick for me before we go to my response. So you see, that's the message that you sent me. So every message that you send is going to come in here in real time. So it's either going to say that it was delivered or that it failed. So in this case, we built that message good. And obviously, you know, I'm not going to block your message. Now, if something fails, it's going to come in here and say that it failed. And on the right of that, it's going to give you a reason why. So there's three common reasons you guys are going to see stuff fail. The first one is a fake phone number, unallocated to phone number. Nothing we can really do about that. That just means whoever went in and put their number in for the lead used a fake number. The second one is it's getting marked for spam. So if that's the case, you need to kind of step back, look at your drip messages and make some adjustments. Um, Remember the tips that we went over, that'll help you avoid that. Um, the nice thing is though, is in the past with other platforms, it was a guessing game if you were getting marked as spam or not. On this platform, you can pop into audit message throughout the day and you can see if your stuff's getting blocked. So if you're getting blocked, you're gonna recognize it right away and you can change it immediately. The third reason is landlines. And we have a solution for that. I'm gonna go over that towards the end of this. So let's go ahead and click on your inbox now. It's on the left-hand side. And go ahead and click on my name there. So you're gonna see that I responded and those other messages went away. So when somebody responds to your drip, it's gonna do what we call breaking the drip and those other messages are not gonna go out. So regardless if it's, you know, positive or negative intent, the messages will stop and then you can come in here and reply to them. So now we're in your inbox. So there's a couple things you can do at the top there. You've again got the block button. You've got a phone button right there to dial out, same as in the uh, contact area. And then the three dots next to that will allow you to add a tag or add a note. So we're gonna build a couple more things really quick um, so that we can continue this conversation and you can kind of see how everything flows. So let's go ahead first and go to your tags on the left. And we're gonna go add tag. And we're gonna name this quoted. And then click in the color area right there. And then right above it, just click in the red anywhere up there. Yep, and then hit submit. 
All right, and then let's go ahead and click on quick responses on the left. And go to add response. And this one we're gonna name interested. And in the message body, we're gonna put sounds great. When can we get on a call to go through your options? And go ahead and save that. And then let's go ahead and go back to your drip campaigns on the left. We're gonna build one more of those. So go to add campaign at the top. And we're gonna name this one ghosted. And then go ahead and hit add more three times. We're gonna do three messages. And the first one we're gonna put, did you get my last message? And we're gonna set that for one hour. And this next one, we're gonna put first, question mark, question mark, question mark. And we're gonna set that for two hours. And this last one here, we're gonna put, I'm in the office until eight. When can we get on a call to go through your options? And we're gonna set that one for one day. And then go ahead and save that. So you're gonna see now that we sent out Andy's drip a little bit ago, it's gonna tell you how many are in queue, how many delivered and how many failed. Also got your campaign ID directly underneath of that. So if you wanted to link up with a lead vendor, typically they'll need your campaign ID. That's what you would give them. Okay. Under that, you can also edit this drip, you can delete it, or you can cancel it. So if you had messages in your queue and you didn't want them to go out, you could hit cancel, and it would cancel out all of those drips. So let's go ahead and go back to your inbox and click on my name. So now you sent me a drip, I replied back to you and said medical. So this is a good time to utilize the quick responses. And the way we do that is it's gonna be that lightning bolt at the bottom of the message block. Yep. And just click on interested there. And you'll see it auto populates it for you. So it's just saving you time from having to copy and paste or anything from a Word document. Right, okay. Anything you're commonly saying, you just save it as a quick response and you can send it nice and easy. So go ahead and send that to me. Now, at this point of the conversation, you dripped me, I replied, and you messaged me again. At this point, we're waiting on the customer. I call this a dead conversation. So we're just waiting on the customer to respond. So what we want you to do when you apply that quick response is immediately apply the ghost to drip. And the way you do that is two buttons over from that lightning bolt, kind of looks like a calendar. Yep, click on that. And it's already on ghosted, so we can just hit add to campaign. So the reason we're doing that is if you scroll up just a little bit in your text box there, if they respond to the canned response within one hour, it's going to break the drip and they'll never get those ghosted messages. But if they respond to you, that ghosted now turns into automatic follow up. So in an hour, they're going to get, did you get my last message? in two hours, Andy, question mark, question mark, question mark, so on and so forth. So you can make that as long as you want. You can make the durations, whatever you want. These are just examples. Now, I got your message. So give me just one second here and I'm gonna to respond to you. And I'm gonna go ahead and put 7 p.m. So now when a customer says they're available to talk to you at a you know, specific time, they make an appointment with you, there's two things as an agent you're worried about. The first thing is reminding the customer, so sending them a text message about a half hour prior. 
And then also reminding yourself because you're pretty busy and you got a lot of stuff going on. So there's two separate things we got to do to do those. First one is reminding the customer. So to do that, we're going to click on the button on the bottom there, right next to the drip button. So all the way on the right. And then go ahead and click in date and time. And click on today's date, so the 6th. And we're going to set that for 6.30 p.m. And then go ahead and click behind it. And then go ahead and click in that message area. And we're going to put our call is in 30 minutes. And then go ahead and save that. So now that's going to be at the bottom of the conversation. That's not like a drip. It doesn't break when people respond or when you, you know, text them. It's going to sit there until 6.30 when it's going to go out to remind your customer. So now we're going to go over how to remind you and also how to send messages in your CRM. So let's go ahead and open another tab at the top, and we're going to type in Google Chrome Extension Store. And then go ahead and click on that top one there. And then in that search bar, we're going to type in TechStrip. And click on that top one there, and then add to Chrome, and then add extension. And then what we want to do is click on that puzzle piece up at the top right where that pop-up was. Yep. And we want to click on that pin next to TechStrip. Yep. Perfect. And let's go ahead and click on that Chrome extension and click gettextrip.com key there in the middle. And then go ahead and hit save. And then let's go ahead and bounce back over to your text strip. So now you're, you've got to be in your inbox to do this. So your inbox and you've got the lead pulled up and they tell you they are free at seven. So when you're on the contact in your inbox and they say they are free at seven, or any time, we're going to go ahead and click on our Chrome extension. It gives you the date and time right here. So you can change the date and time to whatever you want. Since they said 7, we're going to change this to 7 p.m. And hit Add to Calendar. It's going to open up another tab. This is going to auto-populate the name and phone number of your lead. You can make any you know, alterations, any of this that you want to, and then just go ahead and hit save and it adds it right to your Google Calendar. You don't have to do any copying and pasting, anything like that. Um, we're also gonna go over here how to text somebody through your CRM. I'm using a different company's CRM for this example, but it works the same way with yours. So we'll say you dial Jimmy Hope here and he does not pick up. So now we want to apply a drip to him. We're going to click on our Chrome extension. We'll select whatever drip we want to use. So in this case, I'm going to use Andy's drip. And we're going to hit send text drip. You're going to see it says Jimmy Hope is successfully added to campaign. So if you were to go back into your text drip and click on your contacts, you're going to see Jimmy Hope was automatically saved as a contact. And if you click on send message, the drip was automatically applied. So you don't have to do any copying and pasting. You don't have to bounce back and forth. You only have to come into your text drip to respond. Now, we'll say later on in the day, Jimmy Hope pops back in. You know, he came back up. You're, you're calling him again. He doesn't pick up. You hit send text drip again. It's going to say contact already exists. So we know you guys see the same leads repetitively throughout the day. So we built that in there so you don't accidentally redrip somebody. Yeah, so you don't have to keep track of it. If you go to redrip them, it's no big deal. You can do a different drip on them if you want to, but if you were to accidentally try to apply the same one, it'll stop you. Okay. Now, backtracking a little bit, back to when we were in audit message. You remember uh, I said we have a solution for the landlines. So when you click on your Chrome extension, you're going to notice there's a landline remover check button and then this landline remover link here. If you click on the link, it's going to take you to this website. 
If you sign up, you're going to get a thousand free credits. After you run out of the credits, there's no monthly fee on it. We just charge you as you use it. So the yeah. thought process behind it is, is you're spending 0 0.012 cents per tech segment that you send out. Using the example of Andy's drip, that's four messages. So every landline you're dripping is costing you 0 0.048 cents. If you would check it in landline, it would cost you 0 0.002 cents. So I know we're talking about kind of small numbers here right now, but if you multiply that over, you know, a hundred, we'll say you're reaching out to a hundred landlines a week, you know, and then, you know, 52 weeks in a year, just in, at a hundred a week, that's $250 through the year. Right. So it saves okay. a lot of money in the long run. Uh, so it's definitely worth it. Once you sign up, you can go to API here and copy that API key. And you can paste it in this top one here. So when you're on the website, you can do a bulk upload. So if you were working CSVs, it'll scrub it for landlines. But also when you're in your uh, CRM, before you drip them, you can hit landline remover check and it's gonna tell you whether or not it's a landline. So you can use this both in your CRM or on a CSV file. And then the last couple of things I wanna to touch with you on here is um, chat support and recommending features. So as far as recommending features or reporting any bugs, we would go ahead and click get support. And we would hit techstrip.com and you can come in here and report a bug or request a new feature. Um, if you have something that you know you need immediate help with, you're trying to link up with a lead vendor, you know something is wrong with the platform to where it's affecting your day-to-day -day work. You know you're not work. You just go to techstrip.com, and on the home page here, once it loads up, you're going to see we're going to get a little chat bubble down here. So that's our chat support. They're available from eight in the morning to 11 at night, seven days a week, Eastern time. So if you ever need something, they respond within 30 seconds. They're, they're very responsive, very helpful. You can always reach out to them. We also have a YouTube channel. So we've got a handful of different videos on here that if you get stuck on something, Maybe you forget something from our uh, our demo today. You can just go into TechStrip here, click on our channel, and we've got a few different videos here to walk you through stuff. The two I recommend for a brand new agent is going to be how to get started with TechStrip and how the best sales agents use TechStrip. Those are the two that go through basically everything we just did today. Um, then if you ever want to link up with Marketplace or anything, we've got a step-by-step -step video on how to get your API key and your campaign ID.